have a few more words on the bow hold for the beginner student. So uh, sometimes the a student, if they're quite young and their muscles are not fully developed, like, um, you know, age two or three or four or five, sometimes even up to age six, uh, they may need to adapt their bow hold a bit. So um, I sometimes have the student bring their thumb out, you know, to the outside of the frog. So that is um, going to be near the ferrule. That's the metal piece right here where it connects, where the frog connects to the horsehair or right around where the abalone decoration is right here. So uh, you want to make sure that the thumb is on its tip and it's still in that bent position. So it is kind of like the uh, thumb in the professional bow hold uh, situation, but just out here. And what that does is, uh, you know, for the young ones and also for, could be anybody, even for adults or even for, um, you know, older kids who have a bit of tension in their hands, um, then sometimes the the hand is uh, having a bit of trouble with the professional bow hold and everything kind of, uh, you know, flattens out and collapses. And so in that situation, you know, they find it difficult to hold the shape. So when you bring the thumb out to the outside, it actually really opens up the hand. We want that hollow space in there and it helps a great deal. Now the drawback to having the thumb out there is it does kind of lock up the wrist area. And so it's more difficult to, you know, pull straight bow and extend out to the tip area. But I think for a temporary solution, I think it's great. And so it's it's good to um, you know give the hand a chance to form um, you know its shape and strengthen those bow hold muscles until you know that's set, and then we can bring the thumb back in for the professional bow hold. So um, so that's really good. And then once um, the bow hold is sort of settling in, one of the first exercises I do, it's really an activity, is called a bow hold race. And so we set the bow down on our lap, you know, like this with the horse hair facing in. And then I say, ready, set, go. And then we see how quickly we can form the bow hold. So all my students really, really love that, especially the young ones, um, even even every age. Actually, I have a good time with it no matter no matter what. And so the the trick is that basically, um, you know, in the beginning, the student has to use two hands to form the bow hold. But eventually, once everything is set, we don't want to rush them. So if they're still not quite sure what the hand is supposed to look like, we don't want to do the bow hold race yet. It's after everything is kind of established and you ask them to do it again, and then they do it again, and they're able to consistently form a good bow hold. That's when I introduce the bow hold race and I tell them that you need to be able to get your bow hold pretty quickly. So even if I'm holding it like this, I can easily do that. You know, even if I'm holding it with two fingers, I can easily kind of crawl down and form my bow hold. So no matter what situation, if I'm holding my bow like that, I bring it around and I can form my bow hold. And um, they're going to be busy, you know, holding the violin with their left hand as well. So they're not going to have two hands to form their bow hold anymore. So, you know, all of these things are those little steps that we need to consider. So, um, so the secret is basically once you, you know, set it down and then we both uh, say, ready, set, go. And then we take the bow hold. I can usually do it in, you know, a fraction of a second. And the secret is to get the bow, get the thumb really, really nice like this before I go. And before I pick it up, I've actually already formed my bow hold completely. And then I pick it up. So, um, so we do that and I actually keep score. I keep a tally um, and we see who wins between us. And they love it so much. We do it over and over. We do it every lesson. And then they're super motivated during the week to practice that. You know, now they have a goal. They want to beat the teacher. So, um, so, you know, it's a lot of fun and they learn it really quickly. And so, um, so that would be st um, step one. The second thing that I do is, um, probably before the bow hold race or so right around the same time is the up like a rocket. So, you know, that comes from the long tradition of the, um, you know, Suzuki method. This is like a pre twinkle activity. Uh, and so, um, it's a, it's kind of a nursery rhyme. And so we do these motions, you know, as we say the rhyme and that's also a lot of fun. 
So, you know, if you want to learn the words, I'll say it a few times and I'll demonstrate it for you. And if you have a student who's maybe a lot older, then you don't have to say the rhyme. I only do it until it's kind of age appropriate. And then instead we can just kind of go up, you know, and then go down and side to side. So I'll go ahead and, and tell you, um, I'll show you, I'll demonstrate, and then I'll explain to you why this is so important, okay? So the rhyme goes up like a rocket, and you want to make sure, you can't see, I, we're going to stretch your hand all the way up, but up there, what's happening is my wrist is bent, okay? So keep your bow hold nice, but the wrist is bent, and then down like the rain. So I'll start over, okay? Up like a rocket, down like the rain, back and forth like a choo-choo train, bring it into the station. Check your bow hand, and that's when you look at it and fix it if you need to. If it looks good, then do it again. Up like a rocket, down like the rain. And then we want to see that there's a bend right here, okay? So the opposite bend up here, and then the other bend this way, okay? Back and forth like a choo-choo train. Bring it into the station. Check your bow hand. If it looks good, then do it again. One other thing we need to notice is that the tip is always under control. So even when I go like that, you can't see, but I'm keeping this steady. So up and down. Do you see when I come down? It's not kind of wobbling all over. I'm not slanting the bow. It's staying vertical. And even when I go back and forth like a choo-choo train, do you see how I'm controlling the tip? So if the bold is good and a little bit firm, then this should be no problem. All right, so that's another thing to watch out for. So once we do it a few times, I usually tell the student to do it about seven times. And then, um, and then we end it. So the ending rhyme is slightly different. So I'll show you the last round. Up like a rocket, down like the rain. Back and forth like a choo-choo train. Bring it into the station. Check your bow hand. If it looks good, then that's the end. Okay, so what we're trying to do is um, make sure there's flexibility in the wrist and in the elbow and in the shoulder, um, you know, area. And but the bow hold and the fingers and the hand itself stay firm. So see how my fingers aren't sliding around, changing shape, but my wrist is able to move, and so is my elbow. So doing this and doing that. So if they're kind of too old or not interested in the up like a rocket, I just say go up and down. So show me, you know, down, show me up, and then show me side to side, being able to control that. Okay, so those are really two great uh, pre-twinkle bow hold activities and exercises. And uh, you will see really good results with both, both of those. And then there's a third one I do, it's called windshield wiper exercise. And um, I'll go ahead and um, add that to the, into the next video. So if you're interested, uh, click on the next video.